Showing you live pictures now of a Colorado courtroom where the trial of accused movie theater shooter James Holmes has resumed one day after three jurors were dismissed. This is video of the moment yesterday when Judge Carlos Samor Jr. received a note written by a member of the jury. It reads as follows. I I'm not sure if this is something you need to know, but I think the juror in seat nine may or may not be reading the news on this case. She said it came up on her Facebook feed. She has said that they've tried to call a mistrial. She said one of the attorneys posted on Twitter that he or she hoped the jury saw part of the video. So in fact, it was revealed that one of the dismissed jurors received a phone call from her husband about a lawyer tweeting about the case. Now the others overheard it on speakerphone, but neither reported it to the court. In addition to you and in addition to her, what other jurors were present? There were two others. Do you know whether they heard the comments? I think so. I believe so. Paul Henderson is a prosecutor and legal analyst, and Paul joins us now. So, Paul, we've got three women who were dismissed yesterday, and alternates exist for a reason, alternate jurors, so they're now going to be put into place. But wouldn't this be grounds for a mistrial? Well, it, it, it depends. It's always a complicated process when you, these issues come up in the middle of a trial. And, and I got to tell you that the lawyers on both sides are debating back and forth what to argue because what ends up happening is when you kick a juror, you get whomever is next up in the pool. And that's a broad pool. So even if you kick one of the jurors, or in this case, three of the jurors, and they get three of the jurors that are in standby, uh, there's only so many jurors that are on standby. And then you're always balancing against the possibility that a mistrial could be declared, and you have to start and redo the entire trial all over again. And nobody really wants to do that in a case like this. And because keep in mind, they've already gone through 9,000 jurors to get the pool that right. they've gotten in this case. And Paul, typically a in a case like this, their alternates would be four or six that they would have access to? That's correct. So it's only going so deep. And now with three being replaced in one fell swoop, uh, it doesn't leave you much of a bench left to make a lot of mistakes. And so this is what the lawyers are evaluating as they're arguing either to keep those jurors on that exact panel or to have them be replaced. It, it just gets really complicated trying to analyze who's going to come up next and how much leeway you have. But certainly, uh, whichever way uh, the, cont the case continues to evolve, I would imagine that the defense is likely to argue for a mistrial based on something like this. It is actually pretty unusual to have both uh, a prosecutor tweeting or making public display uh, comments about the case, about what the jury is seeing and what his inference is on what he hopes the jury is doing, but then to have that conversation and message conveyed inside the jurors themselves and have an ongoing conversation. That's 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 kind of bad, and it speaks exactly to the disclaimer that the judge gives them about not having conversations with outside community or outside media right. influences just so something like this doesn't happen. The defense has asked for two mistrials before the motions have been denied by the judge. We'll see if it happens again. Paul Henderson, thank you, sir. Appreciate it.